Team Rippers, let's get ready to make a bag. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kasaya, this is Saya Swag. I have a fabulous pattern for you today. It is a fun, quick, easy wallet. It goes together, I did this video in a little bit over an hour, like it just, it's fabulous. It's a pattern and a project you can sit down, start and finish in one day. Who doesn't love that? Okay, so we have the Architect Ladies Wallet from Purses by Holly, right? Purses by Holly. This is the first pattern I have done from her and I absolutely love the construction of this wallet. It is like nothing I've ever put together before and it just flowed together. Here is my first one. Here is the one we do in the tutorial today. Um, there's a couple of differences. My first one, I used a magnetic snap, which is fabulous. You can do that. You can use a magnetic snap. You just have to be aware of placement of the snap because when you are finishing up the wallet, you are supposed to stitch two rows of stitching, one right next to the edge of the spinal, and your snap would get in the way of that. So the way I did it was I just didn't do that row of stitching. I only did this row and it worked out fine. So just be aware if you're using a magnetic snap, the placement of this, if you don't want it in the way, you need to adjust this one and then you need to adjust this one. It can work. Um, and on this one, it has a back zipper pocket, super cute. I used a number three zipper, which is what is suggested in the pattern. On the one in the tutorial, I used a number five zipper. They both work great. So it's up to you whether you wanna do a number three or a number five. I sell both sizes on my website. I have all number three zippers and poles um, in all of the neutral colors. So that's an option. Okay, so here is this, my first one I made. It's got, geez, I don't even know how many card slots. What is that? Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 card slots, an ID slot, and it's got two slip pockets. Everything you want, right? Um, it's simple. You don't need a lot of material. You don't need a lot of hardware. You don't need any interfacing. It's all vinyl, all waterproof canvas. You can use some cotton like I did in the video. I'll show you that. Um, just you need non-fraying material for this wallet. So cork, faux leather, vinyl, waterproof canvas, right? I think that's all the non-fraying material. Anyways, there was my first. Here's the one that we do in the video today. I love it so much. Look at this. This floral vinyl. I am going to link where I got this. I think it's yourvinylsource.com. It is like, I know on camera it looks okay, but in person, it's just gorgeous. It's gorgeous vinyl. Okay, so this one I did an actual snap. I had to move the placement of my snap just a tiny bit because my card slot ended up being a little bit too high. So do kind of pay attention to that. Not a big deal at all. It still totally works. It's fabulous. Here's my number five zipper on the back. So it's just a little bit bigger on the back. And I put my label on the front flap this time. A little bit different. Here's the inside. I did use some cotton material for the inside of my lining and I used cotton for the zipper pocket. So you can use some cotton for a little bit of pop if you want some um, design to that instead of just all being plain waterproof canvas. But the rest of it is waterproof canvas. I just, it is so sleek. It is slim and beautiful. I love it so much. Okay, very beginner friendly. I think a beginner could do this. Um, domestic machine friendly. The only issue you are going to have is top stitching at the very end, just right here along the top of those card slots. It gets a little thick with your waterproof canvas. So just make sure your machine can handle the thickness of those card slots. Other than that, it's pretty thin. It's fast. It's gorgeous. <laughs> okay. Um, there is a 15% off Coupon code down in the comments if you want to purchase this pattern. She has graciously offered that for the viewers of this pattern. So go get it. 
Try it out. You will not be disappointed. You will be in love. I'm going to try the men's wallet next. She has a men's wallet kind of similar to the construction of this. I'm super excited to try it. Okay. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it. And let me know if you guys have any questions down below in the comments. And let's start making this cute wallet. Okay. Let's go over our pieces for this ladies architect wallet. So I am using my first wallet. I used all waterproof canvas and vinyl. For this one that I'm doing in the tutorial, I'm going to use a couple pieces of fabric, just a cotton fabric, and I did do a woven interfacing on those. And then the rest is waterproof canvas and vinyl. It's very simple. You definitely need a non-fraying material for the card slots and the inside pieces and a non-fraying material for the outside. So a vinyl, a faux leather, a cork, something along those lines. I even think you could make it all waterproof canvas, like even the outside, if you wanted to do that too. So I have my one piece of vinyl. That's all you need. It's a great scrap buster. If you have some really cute scraps of vinyl that you've been wanting to do something with, because this is the only piece of vinyl that you need for the whole wallet. Um, I've got it all cut out. I have my zipper, um, spot cut out as well. And then I have all of my markings ready to go for the pattern. Um, in this wallet, cutting it out and putting it together, well, really just cutting it out. This was a fabulous tool to use. It's just like a little tiny blade, a little, it's a Fisker knife. I forget what it's called, a Fisker blade knife. It's on my Amazon shop link that I will link in below, uh, below in the description. But this was a fabulous tool to use while I was cutting this wallet out, it made it so easy. So that's just my little tip for cutting it out. Okay, so my inside main lining, I am doing this cotton with just a woven on it, very simple. I have two pieces for my slip pocket, okay? Make sure you pay attention to the amount that you need to cut of each piece. There is two of these slip pocket pieces, waterproof canvas. I have my zipper pocket pieces. There's two of those. They're two different sizes, all right? And those are just a fabric with a woven. And I have my zipper all prepped and ready to go. I do have double-sided tape on the front and the back. I will show you how she does it in the pattern. There are multiple ways you could do this zipper pocket. I know of a maybe two different methods you could do for this zipper pocket, but I am gonna show you the way she has in the pattern so you can um, figure out how to read how she wrote the pattern. It's very simple. Her instructions are fabulous. Um, you'll catch on no problem, but I will do that. You just have to be careful because you're sewing through two layers of double-sided tape. So I would either put oil on your needle, on your sewing needle, or I would have an alcohol pad wipe um, ready to clean your needle with as it gets sticky because that's what happens to mine with my Waywack double-sided tape. Okay, I'm just chock full of information. <laughs> Okay, so you have all these card slot pieces. You need three of this shape, okay? Three of these. And then you have a smaller one, three of those, all waterproof canvas. You have one of this card slot piece, one of this card slot piece, and then there's an ID holder. You don't have to do the ID holder. If you wanted to do just all card slots, you would repeat your larger card slot section for the bottom. So you just do, you know, two of those. You'll see as we're putting it together what I mean by that. So I have my little cutout for my ID and then I have some clear vinyl to put with that. I do have a snap that I'm going to use for my flap, just like a actual snap, not a magnetic one. And that's all the hardware that you need besides the zipper. Okay, let's start going. Okay, so the very first thing we're going to start with is our zipper. Make sure both ends are melted down here. Um, I am not going to put on my zipper pull until after I put this on. It's up to you. I just find it just a little bit easier. So I have double-sided tape front and back with my zipper right side down. I'm going to take off 
one side of the stubble tape, I'm gonna take my larger zipper pocket piece and I'm gonna line the edge of that up with the edge of that zipper side that I just took off the tape, okay? And then I'm going to flip it back just like that. I am going to take it to my iron and iron it back like that just to make it a little bit easier installing into my um, wallet. So then I wanna take off the other side. So your, your option is instead of using double-sided tape, if you don't wanna use that much tape, you could always sew this on this way as well. It works both ways. I'm just showing you how she has the pattern written. So now I'm lining the edge right side down to the wrong side of that zipper. Okay. And then you will flip that up as well. So this is the inside of my zipper, the wrong side, and this is the right side of my material for my zipper pocket. So when you flip it, it's like that. I'm gonna take this to my iron really quick and just iron this flat. It'll just help with me installing it into my actual wallet. Okay, so I have ironed it just so it stays flat for me while I sew it in. I added my zipper pull. I want the larger pocket on top and the smaller one on bottom, and I want my pull opening from left to right. And just as a side note, I'm using a number five zipper. I used a number three on my first one. I think you can use either size for this wallet. It's up to you. I think it's just a what you prefer. Um, okay, so I am going to start by taking the bottom tape off here, and I am going to lay it onto or into my main wallet piece just like you would a pocket that you're doing on a bag. Same idea. I like to do one side at a time. Actually, I'm just doing it. I feel like that's a little too far down. Okay, and then I'm going to flip this. top one over and take off this top piece of tape. Lay this down, just try and get it looking as even around that zipper as you can. All right, so that is what mine looks like. There's the front, there's the back. Now with the pocket is going to be laying open. I am going to sew a line across the top and I'm gonna sew a line across the bottom. I am not sewing the sides up yet, okay? So I'm gonna do the top and the bottom. And this is where if you use double-sided tape and it's in your stitch line, it could get a little bit sticky. That needle could get a little bit sticky. So just watch out for that. And if you really didn't want any of that back stitching to show when you start and stop, you could always pull your seam or your seam, pull your threads through to the back and tie them. That's an option. All right, and now I'm doing the bottom. Here, my needle getting sticky. My machine makes kind of a sound when that happens. All right. I'm going to take a little alcohol pad here and just clean my needle. If you just rub it on your needle, it gets all the stickiness from the tape off. Good as new. Okay, so that is what I have done, a line on the top and a line on the bottom. Next, I'm going to fold 
my top piece down. And now I am going to sew along those two sides and that closes the pocket. Like I said, there is a couple of different ways to do a pocket like this. I'm just showing you the way that she has in the pattern. side and do the same thing. All right, so that closes up the sides of your pocket right there. And then it's a full box around your zipper and it looks really nice. So now I'm going to close up the rest of my zipper in the back. I'm just gonna put a couple clips so it stays in the place. And it looks like my top is a little bit longer and that is not a problem, just trim that down. okay if they're not perfectly even. All right, so to close this up, I'm gonna go along this bottom first. I'm gonna use a fourth inch seam allowance here. And then I'm gonna come along and go as close to the top here as I can go to close up. And you can get pretty close. All right. Yeah, pretty close. So it closes up your zipper completely. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close up the other side of this zipper pocket. And that's it. That is your zipper on the outside of your wallet. All done. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to add a nameplate right here. You could add it here. Actually, maybe I'll do it on the front this time. I'm gonna add it on the front here, um, my nameplate, and then we'll add the snap. So I just want to kind of find the center of my flap, which maybe I'll go from there. Uh, I think it's about right there. All right, so that's gonna be where I'm gonna put my nameplate. Maybe, maybe a li little bit even farther up this way. Because you got to remember, you have to have room for your snap um, on this side. So I'm moving it up just a little bit so it's not in the way of anything, but it'll still be on the front. And you know, when your wallet is closed, it's going to be closed like that. Good. Yeah, I think that's perfect. Okay. Again, you don't have to do this. This is just my little addition. I make sure and protect it with some Decabell under there. And then I'm going to cover it with some tape so the prongs don't poke and put holes in anything. Right there. All right. On my other one, I put my nameplate right here, so it's up to you, front or back. Okay, now I have the um, area for my snap marked out, so I'm going to add my snap. The, let's see, the male part of your snap. Okay, so it's this part, 
in this part. And then I do put a piece of Decaville under that as well. It's always good to protect all your snaps and prongs and it just prolongs the life of your wallet and your bags when you take extra steps. Okay. And then I have this and I put a, is it this one that goes under it? Yep. A little. All right, and then I hammer that down. All right, I always give it a good tug. Make sure it's on there nice and tight. And there is my snap. All right, next step. So the next part of our pattern is top stitching all of our card slots. So all of these pieces are our card slots, okay? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, plus your ID holder. All you are going to do is draw a one fourth inch line down on the top. You're gonna fold it down and top stitch. I've done it two ways. I've just hand folded it down and top stitched, or I have laid a piece of one fourth inch double sided tape along the very top and folded that down and top stitched. The only problem with that, again, is my needle got sticky sewing through all that tape. So that is up to you. So I have already top stitched all of these pieces. And I'm gonna show you how I did that with this one. All right, so this is what you do for all of these card slot pieces. So I'm gonna take my piece and along the top, I'm gonna to measure one fourth of an inch down. And these um, air erasing pins are your best friend when you're doing a pattern like this, because you can mark on it and they will just, the markings will disappear. So I highly suggest a tool like that. So there's my marking. The nice thing about waterproof canvas is that when you fold it, it makes a really nice crease. So all you have to do is fold it along that line that you drew there, and it's easy to take it under your machine and top stitch. And that's it. So you do that for all of your card slot pieces, which I already did, okay? So go ahead and do that for all of your card slot pieces and we'll go on to the next step. Okay, so for your ID holder, we are going to put double-sided tape on the edge of the top and bottom of your hole. I have a half of an inch marked down there. After I put in my vinyl, I'm gonna fold this down. I like to do it after, because then it covers up that raw edge of your vinyl, and then I will top stitch this piece. So first I'm going to insert my clear vinyl piece, and then I will sew around that. All right, so there's my clear vinyl piece is on. And now I am just going to top stitch around my ID square. I want to start down here.
front, back. Now I'm going to take this and I'm pretty much gonna fold it down to meet the other edge there. That's about a half inch fold. And I'm going to top stitch that down. Whoops. I'm gonna do two top stitches. I actually did that at, well, that actually doesn't look horrible. I did that at a one fourth inch. You should top stitch at a eighth. That's okay. That still looks good. Okay, so there's my ID square. I'm gonna put that aside. I'm going to take my slip pocket. Make sure it is laying the right way when we do this. Okay, there's different width and height of this pocket. We are going to measure up. Placement measurements are in the pattern. And your ruler is your best friend in this pattern too. <laughs> okay, so you're going to take your very first card slot that looks like this. You're gonna place it along that line that we just marked, that placement line on the pattern. And I'm just gonna put a little clip here and here. And you wanna sew along the bottom of this piece that we just clipped on, this piece right here. We're gonna sew along the bottom of that at a 1 8 inch seam allowance, okay? I was very um, interested in why these pieces were shaped the way they were when I was cutting out this pattern. And it's so you don't have all of this bulk in your seam allowance when you're putting this pattern together. It's very smart the way she has it all planned out. It keeps all of this extra out of your seam allowance. Okay, so you're going to measure down measurement is in the pattern for the second placement of the next one. So you want to take your next piece and you're gonna place it along that line you just drew. Again, I'm just gonna clip that into place right there and I'm gonna sew this bottom piece again. Repeat with your third one. All right, so now I have all three of those odd shaped pieces on. Okay, I'm gonna take this last long piece of card slot and again, measure down and place it. but I'm not going to sew the bottom of that. It goes a little bit farther past the end of the slip pocket down here, and that is what's supposed to be. That's how it's supposed to be. That's what's supposed to happen, okay? So, uh, sorry. 
Okay, so we are going to mark the center of these card slots and we are going to separate them. So this last piece is just clipped on right now. It is not sewn on yet. Okay, it's just clipped on. So I'm marking the center of my card slots. I am going to sew up and down that center. And then I will baste the sides down. just like that. And now I'm going to base these sides down. For my sides of my card slots, I like to go from the bottom up when I'm basting because when I go from top to bottom, my foot sometimes kind of moves these card slots a little bit and they get out of line. So if you have that issue, it really does help to go from bottom to top when you're basting the sides of your card slots. And do the other side. Okay, so those are my card slots for this side. Very cool. So what I mean when I say if you don't want to do an ID slot in this wallet, you're just going to repeat this same card slot layout on the other slip pocket and make two sections like this instead of having the ID. Okay, so you're gonna take this and you're gonna fold it wrong sides together and you're gonna line this up with the bottom of the slip pocket, not the bottom of the last card slot piece. So it's gonna look like that, okay? And then I'm going to top stitch along the top of this. Okay, and that is my completed card slot slip pocket piece. We're gonna move on to the other side. Okay, so now we're gonna work on our other set of card slots. So I have my piece, I did my marking again where I'm placing my first one. So we're working with these small ones now. So I'm gonna place my first one along that line that we marked and it's just going to be a repeat except a smaller version of what we did on the other um, slip pocket. So we're going to place it and we're going to stitch along the bottom of that one, just like we did on the other ones. Same exact thing. We're gonna mark and then place the next one and then we're gonna do three of them just like that, okay? Place your next one on. That, and then I'm gonna stitch along the bottom of that one. Repeat. And then the last one is going to be this shorter one and we will lay that on top of these ones. Yep. 
and it will not reach the bottom of this slip pocket and that is okay because it will be covered up when we are all done. So go ahead, place that on and stitch the bottom. So it stays in place. And I'm gonna go ahead and stitch up the side as well here, just so it doesn't move. Okay, so now get your ID slot and we're gonna flip it over. This is the top, this is the bottom. And I'm gonna get some double-sided tape here. I'm gonna lay it along the bottom of my card slot and along the right side of my card slot, along the back. Okay, I'm gonna take those pieces off. And now I'm going to line the top of this along the top of where all my card slots are and it's gonna overlap the edges of these card slots, okay? You wanna cover them up. You want that. Okay, so try and line up the top. Just like that. Oops, so now I am going to sew down across the bottom and up the side. I'm not sewing the top because you need to be able to slip your ID in the top, okay? Here we go. And if you want, you can come up to the top here and you can go back down and that will give this a little bit more reinforcement because you will be slipping cards in and out of here in your ID. So you kind of want this stitching to be nice and secure right here. All right. So that is the ID and smaller card slot section. We are going to fold the back of that slip pocket down, wrong sides together, the slip pocket to the bottom. And we're gonna top stitch again along the top of this slip pocket. All right, those are our two card slot slash slip pockets done. Let's add them to our wallet. Let's add our card slots onto our lining. So this is my inside lining piece. I made my marking, you probably can't see it, but I do have a line there of where my placement is. Measurements are in the pattern. Um, I'm going to put the full card slot slip pocket on that line. So the bottom of that slip pocket card slot will be on the line that I just drew. And I want to Clip that into place. Make sure it's nice and straight. Now somebody had asked if a pin slot um, could be added to this pattern and I think this is where you would do it. I think you could add a little piece of elastic, a loop of elastic right under here and then you could slip a pin right here where it folds in between the two card slots. I think that's how you would add a pin slot to this. So just Keep that in mind if that's what you're wanting to do. Okay, so I'm going to slit, slit, I'm going to stitch down across the bottom and back up the side to stitch this into place.
And then it says to do another row of stitching. Sorry, I have some stray threads here. These are gonna show, I don't want those to show. Okay, it says to do another row of stitching along the bottom, one fourth of an inch away from the bottom of the card slot slip pocket. You're gonna have a double row of stitching down here at the bottom. So that is what the first card slot looks like. Now I'm gonna take my ID one and I'm gonna place it and line it up with the bottom edge of the lining. Very easy, just like that. And I am going to baste it down along all three sides, two sides and the bottom, okay? Okay, so that is the inside of my wallet. We are almost done. Let's put it with the outside. Okay, so I have my exterior piece here. I'm gonna put it wrong side up. I did put double-sided tape along all of my edges. I did the measurements that are in the pattern and on the pattern piece along all the sides for this next step. So make sure you're marking your pieces and putting the tape on, okay? And then I am going to place, I, this is what I did on my last one, which actually worked nicely. I'm gonna take this lining piece and I am gonna put a couple of pieces of double-sided tape on this, just so it stays in place when I place it on top of this exterior piece. I just don't want it going anywhere, okay? You don't have to do this. I just felt like it helped with it shifting. Okay, so I am going to line this piece up with those markings on the back of my exterior as best I can. Okay, right there. All right, now I'm going to start by taking off this bottom tape. And we are just now folding up the edges of the exterior. And try and do it as evenly as you can. Okay, just like that. And now I'm gonna take off the two sides. I have so much stuff on my floor after I get done filming so much paper and thread. <laughs> I have a broom that I keep down here, don't worry. Okay, so I'm gonna fold this side up. And then I'm gonna fold this side up. Um, I'm gonna trim, just a minute. I need to trim my card slot down just a tiny bit right here because it went over the edge of my lining and I don't really want that. Not by much, just the tiniest bit. Okay, so let's fold this side up. And if your sides aren't staying very well, you can put clips on there with it to get it to stay. Okay, there's that. And then I want to do the flap. I'm going to do the top part of the flap first. Okay. 
I'm going to add my snap when this is all done. Now, if you're doing a magnetic snap, if you're doing a magnetic snap, you should put it on before you do this because you won't be able to get into your lining to do the magnetic snap right here. The only problem I came into on my first one that I did the magnetic snap is it um, got in the way of this next stitch that we're gonna do. And so I didn't do this stitch um, right along the edge of the flap. I only did the one when we were final top stitching and it worked fine. But just be aware your magnetic snap will interfere with this first row of stitching that we're doing. So you might wanna make some adjustments to the placements of your snaps, which would be easy enough. Just something to think about. Okay, there's that edge. And this edge. Okay, we're gonna do two separate sets of stitching on this. Our first one, we're going to top stitch with our wallet card slot side up and we are going to make sure that we're getting the edge of the vinyl. We're going to do an eighth of an inch away from the edge of our vinyl and top stitch it all the way around. Then I'm gonna flip my wallet over this way and I'm gonna top stitch along the edge on the outside an eighth away from the edge. So there'll be a double row of top stitching on this wallet. So think about where you kind of want to start it. I'm going to start it down here at the bottom where it's less noticeable. Okay. And I am going to top stitch around my wallet. Now I'm going to keep an alcohol wipe out just in case I see my needle getting sticky. Again, you could always wipe it with oil. That's just what I just should do, but all right, here we go. Now here's where the part, if you're sewing on a domestic, where it can get a little heavy is just right here in this section and right back here in this section. Those are gonna be your two thick areas of the wallet. Other than that, it is not a thick wallet to sew. So just keep that in mind as you're sewing up this wallet. I'm gonna make sure my needle is doing okay here because it's sewing through all that tape. It's good. Okay. All right, so there's my first set of top stitching. Look at that, that looks so cool. So when we end up with it, we're gonna be folding it just like that. All right, so next I want to, my card slots went a little bit taller than I would have wanted. Um, yeah, they're supposed to line up with this little, cut out right there on your 
outside piece and mine are a little bit taller. So that happened on my first one too. I'm wondering if I needed to do just a little bit smaller separation of these card slots, even though that's the um, measurement given in the pattern. It seems like mine are a little too tall when I close it every time. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to add my snap in between my two stitches right here on my flap. So my snap's going to be right there to compensate for my wallet being tall, which it will still be fine. Look at that. Okay. So now I'm gonna take it this way, right side up. And now I'm going to top stitch just from the edge of my exterior. Okay, there's that. And now all I need to do, I suppose I could fold that up a little bit more. Maybe that'll work. Yeah, I think I'm still gonna put it right there. Well, oh, that worked out okay still. All right, I'm gonna move my snap and I'm gonna put it in between these two stitch lines because I feel like if I did it where the pattern says for how I made this wallet, it might be too tight. So I'm gonna do it right there and then we'll be done. Okay, so I have my marking placement for where I wanna put this snap and I am just going to install this snap and then we will be done. All right, I have my little plate under it here. I'm gonna put this snap on top. And then it has this little tool that you stick in the middle. And we hammer. Okay, I kind of give it a tug. I make sure it doesn't spin around. It needs to be nice and tight. It looks good. All right, my wallet is done. That was quick. I did that in almost an hour from beginning to end. That's pretty dang good. There it is. Oh, so cute. Oh my gosh. I am in love with this wallet.